Ricky Patalco, NBC Philadelphia, Phillies pre and post game live. I'm sure uh, his neck might be hurting from all of his uh, shaking his head after what we saw in the first weekend from the Phillies. Ricky, welcome back, pal. How you been? Not bad. How are you guys? We're doing well. Snowed out today, but uh, the Phillies uh, probably give a lot of these bullpen arms a lot of rest. I thought you brought up an interesting point the other night, you know, using these guys as much as they have been, that it might not be pitching one inning every day, but getting up and down so many times. I mean, can they continue to go at the pace they're going so far? No. Very simple. The answer is no. I mean, there's no way that you could use that many relievers every single night and expect – uh, them to be number one fresh and them to stay non-injured because, you know, warming up in the bullpen, people don't understand. I mean, you know, everybody everybody says, oh, you know, starters could, if they fail, go to the bullpen and whatnot. You know what? It's not that easy. Your body, your, your body gets beat up out there. You know what your job is, but certain games, certain times you got to fire up real quick. Your muscles got to get going real quick. And other days it's just not that simple. You know, other days it will take a long time, which is the big problem with the Hobie Miller thing the other night, which I thought was a little bit embarrassing. Right. So can you kind of – you've been out in those bullpens. How – what fell through the cracks there? I mean, did the bullpen guy not call out there? Did the bullpen coach not tell Milner to warm up? Or is this just completely on the manager? Uh, It's got to go to the manager. It's, It's his job to make sure everybody's up in the bullpen. How did he not see him not throwing? I mean, that, that's the thing that gets me. You know, you're sitting in the dugout. I'm sure there's probably cameras and, and monitors in the dugout to see where your, where your relievers are and if they're up and throwing. But, I mean, if you don't call down and you don't get him up, he's not going to be loose to get in the game. And I, I just I, – I don't think I've actually ever seen that before. Yes, so he waves to the bullpen for Milner. Milner's not ready. The now in hindsight, he got the Braves manager ejected from right. the game, and the third, so he got the that third going base ump actually <laughs> turned down to Milner and said, "Get out of here," because Milner was trying to then run to the bullpen mound and throw a couple pitches first and foremost until the third base ump said, "No, no, no, you got to get out of here." And then the Atlanta ump or uh, skipper got ejected because he was bad. He got five pitches. Right now, Milner said he wasn't really prepared because he said he had thrown the previous two days. I mean, now throwing three days in a row—that's taxing enough. But like you said warming up all those times to get ready. You know, now the umpire had to jump in and said, I was afraid the guy was going to get hurt, so I extended it. But apparently Major League Baseball has stepped in and said, well, he did the right thing. They're not going to let them do that again, right? I mean, if you're not ready next time, that guy's going to have to go out there and throw regardless if he's warmed up or not. Well, I mean, the question is, does every other team get a reprieve now? (laughs) You know, I mean, isn't that the bottom line here? The rules are rules. I mean – I, you know, for Hobie Miller, I, I would have been ticked off if I was him, because I believe Kapler said in his press conference that, oh, he was already he was already up and throwing earlier. What what is that? What does that mean? And why why was he up earlier? I mean, so many different little things go into this. It's a very simple thing, though. When you call down to the bullpen, you say, "Get Milner up. He's going to be going in for Freeman." Bottom line, that's it. That that's the phone call that happens, and it wasn't done. It's a simple thing that just flat out was not done. Ricky, do you worry that there might be trust issues after this between Gabe Kapler and his players? You know what I actually worry about? I worry about, I understand they're going with analytics, but it almost seems like that's all they're doing. And it's almost like the manager's just going off what's on what's on a computer. And, and sometimes that does not bode well for the team, for players in general. You see what's going on now. Guys are like, especially on the infield with Kingery in there, if Kingery's hitting, he's going to play. Where he's going to play is the question. Other guys are going to be out of the game. They don't have that momentum builder, you know. You don't get to get that many at-bats in a row because you may have a bad game and then sit for two games, then play one game, and you can't seem to get your timing down as a hitter. I, I think I think the players are going to become a little bit more aggravated as time goes by with their playing time more than anything else. Every day, Ricky, when something gets revealed, like the information that he had filled out the first six lineup cards, uh, does that give you pause that the guys try to predict ahead of time of what the matchups are going to be? Baseball's an organic game. You have to let it happen, right? 
Well, I, I think, you know, a lot of times you go with the hot hand. I know a lot of managers that wouldn't put up a, a lineup card till you know, an hour and a half before the game. I mean, that's probably the way it should be done, just for the, just for the sole reason that this game changes every day. Players don't feel great. Players look great hitting the ball at times. Those are the guys you got to run with. You can't just sit there and say, all right, I'm going to post a lineup. I'm going to post the first seven days lineup, and we'll go from there. And by the way, that didn't happen because he changed his lineup in game two. So, you know what, whatever kind of lineups you want to make out and you think you could be that prepared that way, go ahead and try it. It's not going to work. Ricky, we had Tommy Green on Friday. He said that when he got the ball – he always wanted to go nine, but is that not the mentality anymore that starting pitchers uh, accept just uh, going four, five, six because of the way these guys manage the games? That's exactly what it looks like to me right now. I mean, the game has changed. I get that. But you know what's funny, though, because this is, this is kind of humors me a little bit, that the guys making the most money are still the starters, and their jobs are simple. Go once every four five days and pitch four or five innings. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. Things have changed, but the the salaries haven't. Um, that's an interesting point you brought up there because uh, you're right. I mean, 68 pitches, we know they pull Nola out of the game, and it's basically – but we saw this in the playoffs too, Ricky. I mean, in the World Series, in the playoffs, these teams are going five, six innings and just turning everything – over to the bullpen, and I mean, we saw a guy the other day throwing a no hitter, eighty-five pitches. He was pulled from the game. I mean, it seems that it's not just Kapler that is kind of following this procedure. Uh, no, I mean, it seems like there's a lot of managers. I know, I know for a fact. I mean, I, I'm driving down from Connecticut right now, and I, I was I was listening to a New York station. They were talking about how Aaron Boone is is doing the same type of thing. And he doesn't have the arms that he used to have out there, or at least the mentality uh, of a bullpen out there that he wants right now. So he's in a little bit of a hot water also. Look, you go back to the playoffs last year, look at the teams. This all started with Andrew Miller. There's no doubt about that. And the reason for, for that is he's a monster. You have to have monsters in your bullpen to do this. You, do, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, definitely. You can't just go – five innings and, and go, all right, I'm going to piece together a bullpen for the rest of the game and hopefully come out with a win. Well, it's like anything, Ricky. I mean, in basketball, the, the, the Warriors and the Rockets started shooting threes, so the whole league started shooting threes. Well, the problem is you don't have Steph Curry, you don't have Klay Thompson, so you can't emulate them as well. You make the point that not everybody has Miller, so not everybody can manage their team the way that the Indians were able to because you don't have that guy, and it seems that a lot of these teams are trying to do it, and they don't have the personnel. The Phillies' bullpen, I don't know. What did you think about the Phillies' bullpen entering the season? Did you think it was going to be a strength of this team that you would be wanting to rely on them that much every single night? Not every night, but, I mean, I, I still think it's going to be a strength. I mean, obviously, Hunter's out, Nishak's out, and we don't know how long he's out for. So those are two two of their horses that aren't even in the lineup right now. That's a problem. I mean, there's so many little issues going on. I think the bullpen will be fine, yeah. but you can't burn. You can't burn your two lefties before the sixth inning every night. Well, how about Why? the fact well, – What are you doing? How about the fact, Ricky, okay, there's a guy on the team who's a long man. In the third inning – even though he had nobody warmed up, he went to a left-handed specialist in the third inning. Isn't that the spot where you would say to, you know, Hutchinson, look, I need you to get me three innings today. Sorry, buddy, you're out there for three. Go, you know, get me three. Well, the way he put it the other day, he said we were prepared in game one. We were, we were prepared bullpen-wise in game two. Game three, we were just trying to survive. So are you, you know, to me, that tells me, well, you weren't trying to win the third game. But the other games you thought you, you would win because you knew what you could do with your bullpen. Well, that, that tells me that there's not as much confidence as you would think in the analytics part. Would you say, and that's an interesting point um, about the analytics stuff, because there is a battle going on between the, today's generation and the, the generation of the recent past, but that is the point of, I, you could make the argument, Ricky, that today's managers, many of them are not qualified to manage, but many of these organizations are saying, that's okay, we're going to give you on-the-job training at the major league level. Yeah, I, I, I obviously, have, a lot of people have issues with this. And, and the one thing is, you have to be able to manage your players as well as 
take some analytics and, and instill them into the game. But, but I just feel like when you're hiring a young manager, you're just putting analytics into the game. You're not really putting a man, manager, per se, onto the field. I mean, I went through a bunch of managers in my time. None of them – I mean, Tony La Russa probably had, you know, the most analytical stuff that you could find, all on paper, all in the dugout, whatever you needed to know was there. But he knew how to manage. I mean, he, he tried rewriting – the managerial books at times also, but I think he did it from a different perspective than what's going on today. Everything has changed, and the game sometimes gets confusing to people that have been around the game for a long period of time because there's so much movement going on. And the other thing that, that's going to be concerning is I know it's the millennials who, who love the analytics, but they're also the ones that want quicker games, and that's not going to happen. Ricky, what are your eyes telling you when you watch the games about uh, the managerial staff, I guess, and the coaching staff? Because Mike and I were talking earlier in the program. There was that one uh, issue where they weren't sure if the guy tagged up and left too early or did the guy run into the third base coach. Uh, the, the broadcast crew was confused to what was going on. But Rob Thompson was doing a lot of the talking there, not Gabe Kapler. Are there communication issues right between, you know, the captain and the lieutenant, the number one and the number two. Well, this kind of – I don't i don't necessarily think there's a break in communication there. I just think it takes too long. I'm a firm believer in the instant replay. They should have a red flag and throw it right away. I don't think you should be able to go and have your, yes. your, uh, your, your television guy inside – Look at the play, look at the play, look at the play, then tell the then tell the bench coach, bench coach tells the manager, manager then goes to the, the umpire. I, it's it's just annoying to me. I, I think, you know, the human eye, take a chance. If if you don't win that, then hey, move on. It's turned into football where the receivers asked every play to go check it because I caught the ball. Every play these guys are pointing over to the dugout saying, Take a look, take a look. Now it did help them win the game the other night because the, the guy slid and his foot came off the plate, which ended up helping him, but you're right. And I mean, halfway through the first week of the season, Kapler's like the guy from uh, what movie is that, Pete, with the earmuffs. Oh, that's every uh, old play, school, old, old school. school. He's got the earmuffs on every <laughs> single play. Um, Ricky, the, the obviously Kapler had a tough week. Do we feel like that he just had a tough week and that he's going to grow into this position, or are you concerned that maybe he's a little in over his head? I, I think he knows the game. I mean, he, he's been around the game long enough to know. I, I just think there's so much information pumped in day in, day out, that you lose perspective of what the game really is. It's and and the one thing that that's being lost in all this, it's a it's it's a human element game. Baseball is a human element game. Everything you see on paper does not mean that that's going to happen during a game. Everything that the computer spits out does not mean that's necessarily going to happen in a game. You're going with odds. You're going on percentages, and that that's what that's what analytics is all about: percentages. And sometimes the human element is a bigger factor than anything else, as seen in game one with Aaron Nola. And w what did Freddie Freeman say? They gave us a jolt of energy when they took out Aaron Nola. It's a word we use a lot on the show is intuition. And you take the intuition out of a baseball game sometimes, that uh, that sixth sense of I feel like this guy's going to get me an out or something to that effect. You feel like you lose a lot, and it seems that that is being stripped away because, hey – this thing tells me it's 70 pitches. This guy's done. He might be a, might have been done in his last start, but maybe today's a different day, and that's what really concerns. Uh, what would Jake Arrieta do if if Kapler went to the mound and pulled him at 68 pitches with a shutout? Yeah, I don't I don't think that's going to happen to him. <laughs> uh, if it does, I mean, he's he's going to start to you know second take second thoughts on on why he signed here. I, I think. You know, he's a veteran. He's been a Cy Young guy. I mean, it, it, this is a guy you let go out there and pitch. And, and the bottom line is you can't do what he did in the first – you can't do what Gabe Kapler did all season long. It's just never, ever going to work for a long period of time. It just can't. Um, what do you think uh, offensively? This is a team that uh, looked like they added – you know, Hoskins, they got Santana. Kingery looks like a player. Uh, offensively, what do you think about the team the first weekend of the season? I think they're going to be good. I really do. I'm, I'm not 
if you if you haven't noticed, there hasn't been much said about the offense, which means you know they're doable. It's it's one I love what I've seen from Kingery. Man, I'll tell you what, stay out of the middle of the plate on this guy because he's going to try to take your head off if you're a pitcher. He hit about four balls right up the box. Yep. And that's what you want to see, especially from a young kid, not trying to do too much, just trying to take the ball where it's pitched. I love what I've seen from him. Hoskins is going to be Hoskins. I love his approach, love his two-strike approach. No fear in the in the uh, batter's box. Got to love that. Santana's going to hit some home runs. He's going to do some little things. I mean, he had a great at-bat the other night on a sack fly to left. So, I mean, when you when you piece all the all the uh, offense together, I think they're going to be fine. It's just going to be a it's going to be a death grip on the bullpen. Is is what this whole season is going to be about. Ricky, when you look at a guy like Odubel Herrera, or you look at a guy like Michael Franco, Odubel Herrera not being in that opening day lineup raised a lot of eyebrows. Had you been a player at that point, would you have wanted the skipper to come to you beforehand, or just walk in and see that you're not in there and be ticked off? I thought, well, you definitely want to know beforehand, especially because he's a regular. I would call I would call Odubel Herrera a regular, and if the regular is not playing, and he just walks into the clubhouse and, and sees he's not playing, I mean, it's going to be a little bit of a, a culture shock to him. You know, John Crock was on the other night. He, he had a good point. He said, you know, when Jim Fergosi was his manager, he would know that he would know when he was getting a day off, or they would discuss when he was getting a day off. So we saw Gabe Kapler with his arm on guys in spring training, supposed to be this great communicator, and yet it seems like there's a little bit of a disconnect between him and his players, even just in that example right there. He also, uh, to me, Ricky, and you tell me if you see this as well, seems to be the guy that when pushed or challenged uh, has that one last uh, sort of dig his heels in answer, and he seemed to have that the other night where in the midst of all the misery he throws out and says, I still believe this is a playoff team. Well, he better think that. They're three games into the season. I mean, when you really think about it. But, I mean, the Atlanta Braves, Here, here's my issue. The Atlanta Braves are not the, uh, you know, the stronghold team of, of the year. I mean, this is a team that right. Philly should be able to to play with and should beat up on throughout the season. So, I mean, it's scary. And then you look at what the Marlins are doing. Marlins are hitting the baseball. They're playing good baseball down there, and they're not supposed to be doing anything. Mm -hmm. So for him to say that they're a playoff team, I I think he should be saying that at this point in the season. Uh, Ricky Patalico, uh, NBC Philadelphia, pre- and post-game. The Phillies have an off day today because of the snow. They'll play the Mets tomorrow. No off day for Ricky, though. Nope. Ricky, appreciate the time, pal. All right, guys. Have a good one.